بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين okay, So um, today is the um, 13th episode of Why Since Answers. And today's question is Why did the Prophet وسلم, fight so many wars? So let's look at this question and uh, the end of it. Um, why did the Prophet وسلم, fight so many wars? Often, when we've seen that when, when these questions are posed, they make assumptions. And so we have to carefully understand what exactly is being asked uh, before we answer a question. So before we answer this question, we want to understand what does it what does it mean so many wars? And often, the, the people who ask questions like this, they themselves they don't understand what so many wars mean. The only thing that they have in their minds is that there's someone who went about, um, you know, killing lots of people, maybe feeling very happy about it, and teaching other people to do the same. Um, but none of this is true. That's not who the Prophet وسلم, was, and that's not what he did. So what, uh, how many wars did he fight, and what were they like? So let's pause for a moment before we answer this question to understand the answers to these two questions. Um, well, before we do that, how many wars did he fight? Um, actually, he only fought one war. Uh, there was, uh, I'll describe what that war was, it was fought over a period of 10 years. So um, he, but that war had many battles. So um, let's change the word war to the word battle. So how many battles in this single war did he fight? Um, well, if you look at the numbers, they add up to quite a few. Um, so over a span of 10 years, he participated in 27 battles personally. Um, these in Arabic we call them ghazawat. Uh, a ghazwa is a battle in which the Prophet ﷺ himself participated. And in addition to that, he sent uh, 38 um, uh, sorties. He sent uh, a armies or uh, uh, small groups of fighting men to go and fight somewhere else. Uh, and he didn't personally participate in those battles, but they were fought under his command. And so it comes to a total of 65 battles over a period of 10 years. Okay, that seems like a large number. Um, but let's uh, ask the next question, what were they like? And let's ask particularly how many people died. I'm taking all of these numbers from a, um, uh, from a survey that, that's done by a contemporary um, Egyptian historian, his name is Raghib Sirjani. Uh, he has uh, a number of articles he's written on this topic. Um, and so uh, he, he did this analysis, I'm borrowing his numbers. Um, and so um, he added up uh, the number of casualties, the number of people who died in the battles. And in these 65 battles, the total number of Muslims who di that died were 262. And the total number of enemy uh, combatants who died uh, was uh, 1,022, which comes to a total of 1,284 um, deaths in 65 battles fought over a period of 10 years. Now, if we look at the, these numbers a little bit uh, with a little bit more care, let's ask uh, another question. Let's ask. How many, what, uh, so how many casualties were there uh, compared to the number of fighting men? Because uh, 1,284 casualties with, um, you know, when there's 2,000 people who are fighting is a huge number. It's, uh, you know, it's over 50% casualties. But if it's 1,284 casualties out of, you know, 50,000, then it's a small number. So he worked it out and he saw that if you take the number of Muslim casualties and you divide them by the number of Muslim fighting men, it comes to about 1%. So uh, if you look at the size of the Muslim armies and uh, you take the number of Muslims who died and you divide the number of Muslims who died with the number of uh, 
of Muslims who are fighting, it comes to only 1%. And if you do the same thing for the enemy, the, the uh, this says Muslim, it's a mistake, it should be the, the enemy force, uh, it, comes, it comes to 2%. So, uh, and virtually every single battle was won by the Muslims, was won by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So immediately that tells us, uh, something that we'll see later on, that the victories were, none of the victories were followed by uh, bloodshed and, uh, you know, widespread pillaging and all of these things that are associated with war. None of that happened. Only 2% of the fighting men of the enemy force uh, were killed. And that comes to an average of 1.5%. Um, if you, I mean, if you, if you, between the Muslim army and the enemy army, it's, it's, statistically, you have to be a little bit, you play with, you have to, um, it might not be 1.5% total, but if you, uh, if you divide, if you just take the average between Muslims and the enemy force, it comes to 1.5%. Just for comparison, if you look at the Second World War, um, the Second World War, um, it had 55 million uh, casualties, 55 million people died uh, in the Second World War uh, over a span of uh, not very, um, I forget the number of years, uh, but uh, but it's around the same time, maybe maybe uh, less, fewer number of years. And if you so compare 1,284 to 55 million, it becomes virtually zero. And if you and if you do the same exercise, you take the number of casualties, the number of people who died, and you divide it by the number of fighting men, it comes to 340 <laughs> percent. And immediately you say, how can the number of people that died be more than the number of people who are fighting? And the answer is very simple, that there's many, many people who were killed. Most of the people who were killed in the Second World War were not fighting at all. So, uh, so, the, uh, so this is, um, you know, I want to just pause here for a second and just um, think about w the way that, that, uh, that we study the Second World War. The Second World War, uh, it's told all of us, we study it uh, from the perspective of those who won the Second World War, um, the Allies. Um, and uh, when we study it from the perspective of the Allies, it's a heroic battle, a race to make the nuclear bomb, a battle against evil um, and of bravery and resistance and the mobilization of entire countries and uh, all of the women telling the men to go and fight. That's how the, the, the Second World War is told, the story of the Second World War is a glorious story. And uh, 55 million people died in the Second World War. And the vast, vast majority of the, those people were not fighting at all. Um, the Second World War was not a glorious battle. The Second World War was murder. Um, and uh, and uh, it's just and people and the, num and the amount of misery and suffering that it caused it was unknown uh, you know, before that in human history. Um, so, but nevertheless, this is the way that the, the story, and you know, as, as an aside, uh, you know, the Muslims had nothing to do with the Second World War. Um, nor did they have uh, anything to do, only the marginal. They, they were drawn into the First World War, but they were not uh, responsible for it. And all of the, if you uh, look at uh, the, 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 the death toll due to war in the last 100 years, um, it is, it's staggering. And the last 100, maybe 200 years, if you add, add it up, have been the bloodiest years of in the in the history of humanity and the blood of all of these years is not in the hands of the muslims it's not in the hands of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so when we when when we when we look at these at questions like this we have to we have to be objective and look at look at facts at the way that they are and present um, history the way that it happened so, uh, so the so what what I was trying to say was that if um, uh, that the uh, that when that it's so it's such a shame that uh, that a war like the Second World War, um, which was so bloody, so cruel, 
so uh, uh, you know s such a huge tragedy we said that this battle is studied um, as being a glorious victory against evil and yet when uh, when we look at the battles of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam um, you know they are presented as something that uh, that anyone who follows him should be ashamed of nothing could be further than the tr from the truth and let's let's uh, you know dig around and try and understand um, better what exactly happened um, and we'll see why that's the case so um, so this comparison um, I want you to you know so there have been many battles that have been fought in history actually if you study history history is virtually traditional the traditional study of history has is been nothing more than the study of battles this battle and that battle and this battle and that's that, that, that battle um, much of history has been made by because of decisive victories at decisive battles and when we look back history is all about battles history is um, largely the traditional study of history uh, modern historians are taking a different approach but traditional study of history has been uh, the study of war and war happens war happens uh, and it has always happened and it still happens so the question is that if war happens then how should it be fought so war happens war hap war is happening now as we speak in many places in the, on, on the in the world war happened in 19 in the 1940s second world war war happened in the early 1900s first world war war happened you can go on list all of these wars wars have happened throughout human history the question is when it does how should it be fought just last night i was with a good friend of mine um, he uh, he's a Muslim. Um, he didn't grow up as a Muslim, and he lived in America with a, in a military town uh, with naval bases and air force bases. And uh, he came and it was a uh, he came grew up in a traditional Christian family, uh, church going church going parents, um, and um, and he recalls how. Um, the church used to be attended mainly by uh, U.S. soldiers, and uh, the, they found it. And so the the way that um, Christianity, um, uh, the version of Christianity that is popularly told, the way that is described as um, as being as a religion of peace and a religion of love and uh, turning the other cheek, um, the the soldiers, the Christian soldiers in the U.S army they felt a deep conflict uh, they felt a deep conflict with uh, you know serving in an army and being paid to kill people um, and between their Christian faith um, and that conflict was probably made even uh, deeper uh, by the nature of war what war has become uh, uh, you know the the what what war ha what war has become today it's it's uh, you know the number of innocent people that are killed who have absolutely nothing to do with the conflict. Um, it's this has you know, it's it's a tragedy, and all of this is completely forbidden uh, by the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All of this is completely forbidden. Um, so, but this is what happens when uh, when uh, when uh, when there is no religious guidance on what to do when war does happen when war does happen how should it be fought in the absence of any religious guidance on 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 the proper conduct of war um, people without any uh, religious morality um, they fight wars based on selfish interests and human lives become uh, worthless and uh, and you know, the soldiers are like pawns, and there's somebody else who's uh, and they're being moved, and people know that they're going to die. They're sent into battle to die, uh, uh, and innocent women and children are killed. Uh, in, uh, innocent men are killed. Hospitals are bombed. Schools are bombed. It's all. It's we we live in. We it's it's terrible. Um, so uh, so what what is needed is. That we that there needs to be since war happens, um, there needs to be some kind of a moral conduct 
that is uh, that people adhere to when the war happens and there has been no moral conduct that was uh, more just and more faithfully adhered to than the moral conduct that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught during his 10 year actually it was lasted less um, uh, war uh, that he fought uh, mainly with the polytheists of Mecca. And so there's a, here's an example. Um, the Prophet وسلم, once he sent a, um, a, an army to, uh, to fight a battle. And he, he told the army, he said, uh, he said, in taliqu bismillah, depart with the help of Allah's name, wa billah, and Allah, and the help of Allah himself, and on the way of the messenger of Allah. When we read um, statements like this, Unfortunately, because of the way that uh, uh, that Islam and the Prophet is are presented in the media, um, immediately we get the image that comes to mind is people who are going to fight some kind of a holy war um, in, with with bloodshot eyes and eager to uh, to kill every person who stands in their way, uh, cruel, harsh. Um, that's completely wrong. Um, so the war, remember, happens. It's happened throughout history. It, it's happening in our times. And it happened in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when he spoke about war, when the verses of the Qur'an, they speak about war, it's not to, uh, it's not to encourage the fighting of war, but it's to, uh, it's to set rules um, so that when war does occur, um, it occurs in a manner that's not like the way that we see all around us now. That's not like the way that it has been fought throughout human history. And so when he's reminding them of Allah and he's reminding them of himself, he is telling them to restrain themselves. He's telling them, don't go crazy. He's telling them watch what you're doing. He's telling them killing is bad. He's telling them uh, that you don't, you want to minimize the loss of life. And so he goes on and he says, he says, slay not any old man, nor any baby, nor any child, nor any woman. Confine your fighting, in other words, to the battlefield. Um, all of the battles that were fought in the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they were decided on the battlefield. Um, uh, there was, you know, there's after and, you know, virtually every single battle he won. And uh, if you read throughout history, whenever there's a battle that's won, whenever there's a war that's won, um, the defeated um, city is normally for days it's looted, there's killing, there's murder, there's rape, there's all of these things. None of these things happened. The, everything was decided on the battlefield and, uh, and, the, and the political situation, it forced the Muslim armies into all of these battles because there was a state of war. There was a state of war between the Prophet وسلم, and the Muslims in Medina and between the polytheists in Mecca. And this was, I'll show, it was initiated, hostilities were initiated by the Meccans. And so the Prophet he's saying, he's telling, he's telling the Muslim armies as they're going uh, that, uh, that confine your, uh, your fighting to the battlefield. Then he said, he said, steal not any booty and gather your spoils together. If you study the battles of the Prophet Muhammad it's, it's amazing. Why is it amazing? It's amazing because the, the first battle, the first battle, the first and often considered the greatest battle, uh, Ghazwat Badr, the Battle of Badr, which happened um, in the month of Ramadan, and the anniversary is in another two days of the Battle of Badr. Uh, the, after the battle, there, is a, there was a discussion about the spoils of war. So when, when, the, uh, when, the, when the Meccan army was defeated, they ran away. When they're running away, they leave behind their money, they leave behind uh, all of the things that they brought because they want to reduce their weight and just run away as fast as they can. And so there's money, there's tents, there's weapons, there's animals, there's 
uh, all of these things that are left behind, and uh, and the the and the Muslims, what do they do? They stop. They disagree. The Muslim army disagrees, but they stop, and they have a disagreement about what how how the spoils of war should be distributed. And the opening verses of Surah Al-Anfal are revealed, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Yes, aluna ta'ani al-Anfal, kuli al-Anfal, li Allahi wa Rasul." فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَصْلِحُوا ذَاتَ بَيْنِكُمْ وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ He says that, uh, he says the, they ask you about the spoils of war. Say the spoils of war belong to Allah and His Messenger. What does that mean? It means that in war, every single thing that is done, nothing is done for selfish motive. Nothing is done out of a sense of revenge. Nothing is done out of a out of uh, out of a uh, out of a lust for power and a desire to overpower other people. At every moment, every decision is deferred to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Allah subhanahu wa taala, who will tell you how to how to how to make that decision in a moral way. And so the way that the boots, the spoils, the spoils of war were distributed, it's it's like the, the war is over, cessation of hostilities, and everybody just stops. Nobody takes anything. Everything, all the booties there, nobody takes anything, everybody steps back. There's somebody who's appointed, he goes, he collects everything. That's what the Prophet is saying. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, steal not any booty and gather your spoils together. And then it's divided between the, 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 the fighting force, because the fighting force were not a professional paid army. Um, they, they went out because they were forced to, to go out and fight in order to defend their freedom, to practice their faith freely. They weren't professional fighters. Um, and so the spoils of war were divided between them and a share was sent back to the state treasury in order to be used to help the poor. Uh, so, um, so this, uh, so this is this is amazing. Uh, this doesn't even happen in our times. Okay, so he says, steal not any booty, gather your spoils together. And he said, how did he end his advice? He said, make reconciliation, and have excellent conduct. For verily, Allah loves those who have excellent conduct. And this is why, uh, this is why the number. Of uh, of people who were killed in the sixty five battles, sixty five battles over a period of ten years was so small. Um, so uh, so if we return, if we return to our question, uh, why did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fight so many wars? Now we uh, we have a good understanding of the number of wars or battles that he did fight. And what they were like. Let's now look and at uh, at and uh, and uh, look at how this question should be answered. So, why did he fight so many wars? Well, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fought a single war, uh, not so many wars, a single war, um, and it was fought over a period of ten years, probably probably less than ten years. Uh, the conquest of Mecca was after eight years. Um, he said he fought, he fought a single war over a period of 10 years after 13 years of non-violent resistance. Um, so how, what happened? The Prophet وسلم, he stood up and he called people to worship. He called the Meccans to worship one God. He called them to leave aside uh, their idol worship and uh, he called them to, be, uh, to not steal the wealth of the orphan to not kill their daughters, not to commit female infanticide, to distribute inheritance uh, justly, not to prevent women from receiving their inheritance, to give inheritance to women, to give inheritance to orphans, uh, to feed the poor, to not cheat, uh, to be honest. He taught, uh, he called them to live honest and moral lives and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and he had success. And since he had success, and that led, that threatened the position of the Meccans as the custodians of idolatry in the um, Arabian Peninsula, so they persecuted him and his followers. Um, and the persecution increased, um, and it got worse and worse. And the Prophet wasallam he forbade any of his followers from, uh, from fighting. He forbade them from striking. He forbade them from any, from, it was, 
nonviolent resistance, 13 years of nonviolent resistance in which people starved to death, uh, children starved to death, people were tortured to death, it was 13 years of nonviolent resistance. Then after that, there was a direct attempt on his life and he, because of that, he left Mecca, he went to Medina and he was welcomed into Medina uh, by people who willingly and happily um, uh, uh, followed him and they, they wanted to establish a home where Muslims could, uh, could uh, practice their faith freely. Uh, but when they, when they did that, they, they continued to be a threat to the uh, idolatrous establishment of the Arabian Peninsula. And so the battles continued. The, from, the point, from the point when the Prophet ﷺ left Mecca for Medina, there was a state of war between Mecca and Medina. And, and, this, and so there's a state of war and there's a state of, uh, that's, it, that's, that was the state of things. There was, there was each side considered the other side themselves to be a state, a state of war against the other side. And these hostilities were initiated by the Meccans. And so, so in order to, in or, so, so, so that his followers could practice their faith with complete freedom, um, he, uh, he asserted himself and he fought battles. And, uh, and he fought these battles with strength and bravery but without any aggression or arrogance. This is important because um, as Muslims and actually as human beings, every single human being should be proud of the battles that the Prophet Wasallam fought. These are the noblest and uh, you know, they're, they were, all of them were fought against, uh, almost all of them were fought against uh, numbers that were far greater um, they were fought uh, with justice. They were fought without any aggression, without any arrogance, without any lust for power. And the numbers themselves, they betray this. They show, they show that this is how, and, but, and, and they didn't, and the Muslims didn't back down against, uh, against the odds. They were outnumbered. They were, they, they were, uh, you know, um, they had, uh, um, uh, their their enemies had superior weapons, um, and they went and they showed strength and bravery. But there was never any vindictiveness. There was never any revenge. And uh, so these are models of human moral behavior. And so they and so this is something that everybody should be proud of. These battles they were fought with strength and bravery, without any aggression and arrogance, and they ended in reconciliation. So in the eighth year after the the Prophet ﷺ, he came to Medina. He came back to Mecca and he, the, the conquest of Mecca, uh, the greatest victory in his lifetime, um, he comes and in all of Mecca is under his power and he comes in with an army and everybody, there's entire complete surrender. And these are people who have killed his relatives, they've tortured his followers, they've, they've, uh, they've done terrible things. Uh, uh, they've done terrible things to him and he stands before them and he says, what do you think I'm going to do with you? And, uh, and they said, uh, and, and they said that you're, you're, you're a generous man and the son of a generous man. And he, and he forgave all of them. He forgave all of them. And they, and this was the day when people, they, they, they entered into Islam. They became his followers in huge numbers. Because all along they knew that he had the moral upper hand. All along they knew that they were the ones who were uh, full of uh, aggression and arrogance and hatred and envy and vindictiveness and all of these things. And he came, he forgave all of them, and they they uh, you know, they they entered into Islam in huge numbers. And so this is how this war ended. Is there in the history of mankind any war that has ended in this way? I don't know of any. I don't think there was any war in the history of mankind that has ended in this way. And so this war that he fought over a period of 10 years, fewer than 10 years, um, it ended in reconciliation. He set a model for the proper conduct of war forever after. And so when we, when we read about this, the only thing that we can say is, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless him and give him peace. So um, that's the answer to today's question. Uh, does anybody have any questions?
inshallah. A straightforward lesson. Okay, so no questions, we'll stop here then. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala ala wa huwa hasbunahu wa alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.